He is an evangelist and founder and president of Mount Zion Drama Ministry and Mount Zion Television. Welcome with us, Pastor Mike Bamiloye. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Are you there? Good morning. God bless you. Good to you. have you, sir. I'm told Monday is actually your birthday. Yes. But yes, we are yes, talking yes. to you today. So today is Good Friday. How are you doing today, sir? What <laughs> are you doing? very fine. Thank you very much. What are your plans yes. for today? And good Friday. Friday we are staying at home and praying and rejoicing and thanking the Lord. If it has been a normal day, uh, it has been a great celebration today. Right. It's been Friday. But, yes. yes. But we are keeping to the Lord. We are staying so, at home and we are praising God and we are thanking Him. Okay, before we, we get into your birthday plans and celebration for Monday, we'd like to take you to your recent article mm -hmm. where you said that this season... <laughs> This season of COVID-19 stay-at-home lockdown is a dress rehearsal to the yes. real um, coming of um, yeah, the, coming. Uh, the, the second coming. <laughs> I'd like you to um, so help us understand better because there's been a, an online war now going amongst pastors. who are saying, oh, it's 5G, uh, is, the, is the indication to lot to the uh, end times. Others are saying COVID-19 is actually the Antichrist. Um, <laughs> will be, you know, all sorts of arguments going on out there. I'd like to hear your own views on this. Actually, my view um, is very simple. And it's just that I'm... Um, for an, an average, every child of God presently, and according to the principles and the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we believe the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon, very, very soon, and then that is in the rapture. So the belief is just that um, the, everything that is happening now is preparation towards the rapture of the saint. That is, that is what I believe according to the scripture. And, that, and after that one, that uh, there may be crisis, there may be problems, there may be negative situations and the pandemic. And uh, so, so, so I said that what is happening presently is just for us to sit up and pray more and look and look up towards Christ and amend our life because what is going to come after all this when the Lord has taken his children home is going to be more terrible than this one. So that's why I call it dread reality. Mm. Okay. All right. so, Go ahead, so the government is having a hard time having people stay at home, you know, yeah. because of uh, the guideline, which is stay at home, don't go to yeah. churches. And I would like to hear from you. What do you think? What would you tell your congregation? Um, what would you tell Christians now? Should they stay home or should they still find their ways into church and <laughs> just be in church? Maybe the second <laughs> coming will come and take them straight from church. You know? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's our responsibility to obey the government. A good Christian will obey the government. And when you look at the news all over the world, you discover that it is even more severe in some other nations like Spain and Italy and UK. They don't want you outside at all. So if the Western nation, is European nation, that advanced countries are keeping to this and, 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 and as a way of, of curtailing the dreaded disease, we want, to, we want to thank God that everything is still a bit normal here. Mm. We have not yet got discouraged so much and uh, and so to curtail it it is very very advisable for us to do the simple thing the simple thing is just to say i don't do it is very difficult but we just have to do it because that is what in normal countries advanced nations are also doing right so i will advise my people to stay at home too so based on uh, um, bringing back to what you said this is dress rehearsal um people are saying that this is rapture as a Christian and a born again Christian, this will not come close to you. So we have religious leaders also pushing the narrative that as a Christian, you can live your life anyhow you want to. The grace of God will protect you. People are praying and saying that the blood of Jesus is on the on their doorposts. Nothing would happen to their household. While as a Christian, I understand that, but I also do not want us to push the narrative that will make people get careless about protecting themselves. I know that you're a respected figure in Christendom, and I would like you to put a message forward to people that have that mindset that this is rapture, I will go to heaven and I will be safe, or no, nothing will come to me because I am a child of God. What would you say to such people now? No, no, this is not right. This is not rapture yet. What the rapture? That, um, that, that the, 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 the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. appear and we'll go and meet the here. So it has not happened here. So it is not your rapture. Mm -hmm. So I would just say that we should obey the government because, because that law is 
our advantage. Mm, right. The instruction is our advantage. Pastor, our health. Yeah. Right. Pastor, people have said that church worship, going to mosque, would never remain the same again. Because um, times like this, people are now realizing that the church is the people, not so much the buildings. Mm. Um, people are saying that um, it might be difficult for pastors or church members to start saying, let's have healing services or uh, you must pay your tithe and offerings because people are now realizing that, okay, maybe um, the tithe and offerings should have been used to build hospitals or maybe we should have actually um, put more emphasis on house fellowshipping than even the big, big buildings. As a pastor, uh, you own a huge ministry. How would you react to these um, lines of think of the lines of thought? And actually, number one, I'm um, an evangelist. I do not have a congregation. Okay. I don't have a church building, but I worship also in the church. Okay. Have a church That's number one. Number two, it's just that um, we don't know how it's going to be after this event. But mm. one thing is very certain: that people are more conscious of God now. Yeah. That 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 is very certain. You see a lot of people, even on social media, holding house fellowship. Mm -hmm. So we believe that at the end of all this, there's going to be the love of men getting closer and more to God. See, that, 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 that consciousness of God. We are all praying, having, asking for mercy, for, for more protection. So I believe that at the end of all this, it may not reduce, it may not reduce consecration, it may not reduce dedication to God. It may increase awareness and consciousness of God. There are pictures of some countries nearby, people, people praying and worship God in the school of the road. People are crying and praying and asking God for mercy. Because we don't have the vaccination yet. We don't have the vaccine yet. We don't have the solution yet. And in some other countries, things are just getting more worse. But in our own case, we know it's the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. so I like to love God more, I believe. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to your view. Bandilini, muni bandilio, bandilio. She mo pe ma ya jayi muni baba. Kilo njayi la ya, enyi oni Jesus ni. Oda na, ani Jesus, kilo ita fi pe mi. Glory. Eh, ori kani wa kome lo juala. Moshi mori on lo juala. Moshi njibo vai. O kan ba gbe orin on ni. Mo biyan ju titi. Kin le ran ti orin on. Mo ran ti. Ni mo se ni kin pe o. Pe wo ya. O ba mi ran ti. Ha. Ba mi. E na na wo ko yin lo yin lo juala. Be ni. O ko mi lo na mo se ko. Mo ko lo juala. Ba se wa njibo vai. La ba na ti orin mo. E wa npe Ba mi dele ko wa ko wa tu me fun mi ko wa ko fun yin si wo jo ko yin lori yen pa ko loju ala ni o to se ni ya gbe ye ga o to ni o to lo so emi nikan ni won ko lorin loju ala eh o da e ma lo agbelebun mi thanks that's the, that's evangelist mike bamiloye in action um sir are you still there I'm here. Thank you very much. Good to have you back. Now, <laughs> Thank you. yeah, the issue, yeah, go ahead, talk Okay, so I am a huge fan. Um, I grew up watching your movies, and I feel like you're one of the um, representatives of what ministry can be, which is where you have a gift and you use it for God. And I've seen you raising many people in the line of acting and receiving a, um, a living, Thank you. pushing the gospel through movies. I'm very impressed and I want to celebrate you. Um, you've done this for a long time and I feel like the entire country should be celebrating your work. But I, I want to ask a question concerning the movie industry and um, your own play. So you've been in this industry for 30 years. Would you say that you've been able to replicate Christian movies at the scale you would want to see. We know that when you started, the, the Nollywood was at a low level and they've been able to really, really mature so far. But we're not seeing that same maturity. maturity in Christian movies. What would you say is the problem and how do you think we can help create a more robust platform for Christian movies to thrive? 
Okay. I will, I will just say that um, uh, since, since we started, since the Christian movie started in the country, mm. there has been an improvement actually, though we are not yet where we are supposed to be, but there has been an improvement. For example, when we first started, we were not, we were not, we were not on, 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 on television, mm. we, we, are not, we are not into many homes, but today you could say that um, you have a lot of Christian movies on many television channels today. You go on YouTube and you see Christian movies but, uh, covering a lot of a lot of a lot of platforms on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. People are getting more interested in watching Christian movies. There is a development, though there is still room for the, for improvement. Mm -hmm. But there is more development. It is it is spreading so far. For example, for example, the Abedjoye that we just print, that we just showed now, the clip we just showed is Abedjoye three. Abedjoye three we started the premiere uh, on December six. And between December 6th and March 15th, we, it was premiered in 593 places oh. in, the, in 15 countries. In 15 countries. The same thing Abedjoye 2 was premiered in about 360 places. Abedjoye, Abedjoye 1 was premiered in about 360 places. There is improvement now. People are getting more aware of Christian right. models. I like to, there is solution inside. I'd like to ask you about yeah. the way in which you portray your message. A lot of people feel like your your movies had traumatized them growing up, um, especially the Ayamatanga, the scary um, <laughs> demons that show up, and they grew up with that um, trauma, thinking that they, they have these these nightmares of what the devil is. And, and and growing up as a Christian, a lot of people feel that maybe that wasn't the right approach. Maybe it shall be it shall be more subtle. In the way you 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 convey the message of Christianity, because people, I mean, today, like, we see other international producers produce Christian movies, but in a more subtle ways that people get the message. But your movies okay. seem to be whole ha so hard, like Very a nice. like a sledgehammer killing an ant. <laughs> <laughs> it comes across that way. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Actually, okay. the 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 message that you are producing is everything is not about. Terror is not about horror. There are several other movies mm -hmm. that are very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Look at one that is going presently, that is, that is, that is on, 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 on life presently. My mother-in-law is about homes, it's about marriage. Some of my life is about homes and marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, any of my stories is about homes and marriage. And, and uh, Apotieri was about mm -hmm. children raising, of, of, raising of children. So our movie is not all about terror, horror, people are scary. <laughs> But at that time of Ayamatanga Baranla, that was what was needed at that mm. time. Oh, really? <laughs> I was traumatized. <laughs> I mean, I, every little thing I saw in my house was a demon. <laughs> it was needed at that time because the Lord gave it to us and there is need for attention. Mm. There is need for attention because before Ayamatanga, there were all that, movie, there were all that television drama that was scary. Mm -hmm. like I Yes, that was what was raining then. Yeah. <laughs> Your okay. 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 Yes, okay. There was need for another one. Yes, that okay. God mm. point taken. I get that. Okay. God mm. by force. Right, right, right. So, um, when when it comes to Christianity and evangelism, and movies and entertainment, as regards how children receive it and young adults. I find like the Christian Christianity struggles or competes a lot with secular music or secular entertainment. Secular entertainment seems to find a quick and easy way to reach young mm. people and children. Mm -hmm. And I find that Christianity seems to be struggling to do that. Could it be in our content? Could it be in the way we say and uh, we teach it? And could there be something we can learn from the secular ministry on how to reach our children and young ones? No, it is not a struggle. I don't see that a struggle. There is this, a different approach. Mm -hmm. The secular movie production, secular music, they have their own approach. For example, in the secular world, they, 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 make, movie, they make music and the movies to entertain the fans. In the Christian drama and Christian film production, it's though it must be entertaining also, but it must be inspiring. It, it must be spiritual. It must bring source to the kingdom of God. So we may not be able to follow the approach of the, of the secular world because it is a ministry. It, it, it is not industry per se. It is not searching for money per se. It is not looking for fans, but looking for souls. And therefore the approach is spiritual, 
we, we look up to God, we seek God's faith. So the, it's a different approach. The rules that govern them is not the rules that govern us. Mm -hmm. Let me ask us. So, Yes. Let, me, let me ask you concerning family, because um, okay. growing up, we saw you as, I mean, an evangelist and strict Christian man with your wife too, no makeup, very tired hair, looking very, very... <laughs> <laughs> when I see your wife, I'm like, yes, this headmistress kind of person, you know, <laughs> but I like to hear your story as how you raise your children, because today many people are coming up with all these uh, parenting um, techniques here and there, but you have grown children. You, we, you went, they took, the, they, they were born into Christianity and and that whole uh, that family of, of prayer and all that. So and your, child and your children. Running, so we, so we know you, you, you've yeah. seen the track record of you having children in ministry and now today they, they are, are also already. In in that what ministry. did you do differently? Because what we are used to is pastors children, children for pastors. Run away. They always run away. They they always derail hmm. from the ministry. How did you get to your kids to do what you're doing? I, I, I would say it's just like the help of the Lord. But number one is that I, I though, though I, my, my mom, my mom was a Christian, was, was very fervent, but I wasn't born so much like that into Christian homes. My upbringing was very bad because I live with different types of people. My mom died when I was very young, four years old, and my dad was not a, was, was away, far away in the north. So, but my elder sister, I was living with her, and she took me to various places because she too was growing at that time. Mm. So the beginning was so rough, and so the, so I, I was introduced to a different type of bad life at the beginning, mm. from age seven, until yeah. I knew Jesus Christ at the age 15. And, and so that was when my experience with Christ began. But to now speak about how the family, how my family was raised, I, I've been in the ministry since when I was 25 years old. Mm. And that fear of God helped me to make the right choice of a woman. I, I got married in 1988, but it was by the help of the Holy Spirit that I was able to identify who my wife was supposed to be. And I was very lucky to get the right person. And that is my wife. Mm. And so with that help, I was able to raise my children. And so the children grew up in the ministry. Not only my children, biological children, even all of us in Mongolia, we are 16. The families in Mongolia are eight. All our children in the ministry grew up like that. Mm -hmm. It's not only my children that are writing uh, into Christian movie production. There are some other children also in Mongolia State Ministries that are producers and directors and director of photography. In, including the editor of Abejoye, is also a child in Mongolia. Right. Okay. Yes, right. so 60 years is a big number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we hear people like in their later years, they say that some things when you're growing up, when you get to that age, there are some things you regret and things you're proud of and things you wish you could have done better. And they say to us that most times it's the things that you didn't do that you regret most. What would you say you wish you had done better? What would you say it make, uh, it makes you the most proud at this age? And what is it that you regret? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I, 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 will, I have no say I regret anything at all because coming to Jesus Christ has made a serious difference in my ministry and my calling and my vision and perception and focus and future. But no, point number two is, the greatest thing that I would say give me great joy at age 60 now is just that. I, I, a lot of people have entered into this type of ministry that I'm in. And there's a product. I have products. There are children in ministry that are growing to love this work, that are doing this work, that we are trained in the Mozambique Institute. More than 5,000 students are grown. Wow. And there are drama ministers making Christian movies everywhere. But the most important one are my personal biological children. Mm. Half three of them, uh, Dami, Joshua, Dara, they are all in the ministry. Wow. With me. And uh, the other one is the one writing most of these, of, 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 of most scripts now. The, 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 the younger one is the full editor and sound effect, making the music of the movie. As wow. JMIT. That must make you proud. <laughs> it's it making me happy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I'm so happy when I look at the results of this work. Mm. And many drama ministers that are rising up and doing yeah. the same work 
that have gone through our institute right. and then my children, it gives me great joy. Fantastic. Okay, talk about I'm really, really happy for you. And I wanted to ask something. There are a sect of people that we haven't effectively captured when we produce content in Nigeria our young ones, our little children. We don't have Chris, enough Christian content for them. My children watch CBN, we have the Superbook and all those stuff, but wh what can we do? What, what would you see, what do you see Mount Zion doing to provide yep. good content that would engage children from like two years old and sustain them, mm. imputing the right values into them from that point? Because the Western world and their content is already giving them a perspective Johnny and that Gale. paradigm is following they are growing in that paradigm so how do we Gale. produce christian content oh, that would engage and sustain. Uh, sustain the children as they grow thank you very much you are, you are, you are mm. seriously right you are right and uh, i would say first of all um, the next phase of christian movie production in nigeria is to go into the production of children movie mm. that is very very necessary that's the next phase because we have been taking care of our youth taking care of adults, taking care of married people, mm. but we've not been able to take care of the children. We don't have content for them. Mm. And I think that's the next phase of Christian film production in Nigeria. Before I let you go, so I have to ask you about your wife. About She's your so wife. Beautiful. First of all, she, your wife is very beautiful. I mean, we grew up watching her and just seeing her as that model of a Christian woman. Um, tell us a bit about her. You guys, I mean, what do you guys, I mean, you, you guys started this ministry together, obviously, but... What do you do to have fun? You play, you travel together. What are the things she likes? What are those her dislikes? What has she done in the house that makes you happy? Just tell us a bit about your wife before we run up. Sure. My, my wife, I would say, is a very fantastic partner. <laughs> with her, I've been able to raise this work. I've been able to do this work together with her. Hmm. And I married her in the ministry because I found her, I found her in the Yazda Hall, Jama That's I found her. And because she has a great vision for drama evangelism, she's a scriptwriter too. Mm -hmm. You know, she reads a lot of scripts. She has written a lot, including television series. So I would say that um, apart from being busy in the ministry, she played a great role in bringing up these children. Mm -hmm. I mean, my children. She gathered them every morning whenever I'm, around. I'm, like, I'm not at home. I'm done. They respect her because she's like a prophetess in my house. Oh, that's the so nice. great thing that I know about her. <laughs> so you guys look so perfect, as in. So, so let me ask you this nice question. You, this, you never fight. Ah, so that you uh -huh. don't fight. You've never had alcohol in your life. You never drank before. Alcohol? Yes. Have you ever ah, tasted alcohol? Ah, before I knew Jesus. Before 15 <laughs> years old, you used to drink. Yeah, before I knew Jesus. Oh, that's ah, nice. I, I think you know Jesus at 15, but before then, I did so many horrible things. Mm. Ah. <laughs> you thought you never that's tasted this side of the. That. Side of the <laughs> Hello? No, no, wait, we can hear you clearly. We can hear you clearly. Yes, right. So you and your wife, you don't fight in the house, or it's just the Holy Spirit. Come on, take over. <laughs> you have arguments. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let God just say, no, I think it is this day. No, don't say the same this day. But I see the Lord is saying this day. So, and at the end, there is submission. Mm -hmm. Either from our side or from my side. Oh, Please so define yeah. submission. <laughs> I need you very quickly in terms of what is submission in your own Christian marriage? Yeah, my submission in my own Christian marriage is having spiritual understanding of exactly what the oh, Lord wants us to do. And the wife either submitting or the husband agreeing with what the wife says. The submission is on both sides. Mm. Ah, you see. Please repeat that last sentence. Many Nigerians don't understand it. Submission is where? Both sides. Is on both sides. Oh, thank you. <laughs> God bless you. We love you. <laughs> so we wish you many happy returns, sir. God bless you. Monday is your birthday. We'll try to remember to greet you again on Monday. And our regards to your wife, Master. Yes. God bless you. Thank you. Have a fabulous day. Thank you very much.